bees. As I sprinkled basil in the tomato sauce I was preparing, I heard a loud pop. It came from outside. I walked to my front door and opened it, peering left and right. A gust of wind almost shut the door in my face, but I pushed it back. I realized it was dusk and ominous clouds hovered in the sky. I scanned my property, not spotting anything, but then I heard it again. Pop. It came from the ground. I looked down and saw nothing and then I noticed a quick flash of light. Cautiously, I bent down to get a better look. Zips and zaps filled my ears as sparks came flying out of whatever lay on the ground. If not for the luminescence, I never would have spotted the dead bee that lay on the ground. As I went to pick it up, the sparking stopped. I held the fuzzy bee in my fingers and examined it. It looked like any other bee. I noticed a minuscule flap of skin sticking out from its belly. I grabbed it and tugged. To my horror, the skin started coming off in a spiral pattern as easily as peeling an onion. A silver metallic skeleton now lay on my palm. Multicolored jewels shining brilliantly spotted the underside. My first thought was it was some kind of drone, maybe a futuristic technology the military hasn't disclosed yet. There's also an army base not too far from here where I was formerly stationed as a soldier. I carried it inside to see what lay underneath. Looking back, I should have left the thing where I found it. That would have been easier for everyone involved. Everyone. I got a magnifying lens and checked out the body. There were no screws of any kind, nothing to indicate how to open it. I went to my garage and grabbed a saw. Putting tape on the head and bottom of the bee, I secured it as best I could on a wooden desk and began hacking away. The metal was surprisingly strong. It felt like cutting through thick steel. After half an hour of steady back and forth, I picked up the two halves and peered inside. What I saw was, truthfully, I don't know. I can only describe it as crystalline wires emitting a lively orange glow. They moved around violently as if trying to grab whoever caused them pain. Suddenly, I heard a commotion outside. A group of people murmured excitedly. Someone knocked on my door. It was probably Sheila, the nice lady who lived across the street. But I was too caught up in what I was doing, so I ignored her. I lay the pieces back down on the desk. I snapped pictures of the mysterious object on my phone. Then I logged onto my computer and went to a conspiracy website. I consider myself an amateur conspiracy theorist and love browsing the forums for strange things people have found, even if they are faked. I uploaded my photos and asked if anyone knew what it was, and then I heard my fire alarm go off. I ran to the kitchen, pushing my way through the smoke. Apparently, I forgot all about the tomato sauce on the stove. I threw away the burnt mess and fanned the smoke away from the fire alarm. I went back on my computer to check if anyone replied. After hitting the refresh button, I was surprised to see that my post didn't exist, and I was logged out of my account. I tried to log back in, but my credentials didn't work. I tried to create another account, but it was pointless. Every time I hit submit, it said, could not create account. I figured the site was undergoing maintenance. I put together a tuna sandwich and devoured it. Then I went to bed early. I was awakened the next morning by a series of loud thumps on my front door. I climbed out of bed in my pajamas and answered it. Two men wearing black suits and dark sunglasses stood there, along with someone in a silver hazmat suit. Behind them, I saw an unmarked van and two soldiers holding carbine rifles stood guarding it. Sir, we're here because of the artifact you found. We'd like you to come with us to the army base. How, how did you know about that? Just come with us, sir. We'll explain on the way. My instincts told me not to trust them, but seeing the soldiers behind them with guns stopped me from trying to be a hero. I went upstairs to get dressed, and the three men followed me. They stopped outside my bedroom door. Then they escorted me to the garage, where the one wearing the hazmat suit picked up the artifact and placed it in a metal canister. On the ride over, no one answered any of my questions. After we arrived, I followed the two soldiers as they led me to a building far away from the entrance of the base. We went through a series of doors before we came to a room. Inside, the walls were stark white and a light gray table stood in the middle with two chairs. 
The simplicity of the room made me uncomfortable. They told me to sit down while they called the base commander. Minutes later, a tall, aging, well-built man with a crew cut walked in. His uniform was decorated with many colorful medals. I won't state his name to protect my identity. So, he began, I'd like to discuss the object you found. My career in the army had turned me into a no-bullshit soldier, so I knew when people were lying. To be honest, he said, it is a microscopic insect drone that we have been working on. Projects like this are best kept secret in order to prevent others from replicating it or trying to steal it from us. If it is a drone, I said, then what about those wires I saw inside or whatever the hell they were? They look like they were alive. As I said, he spoke angrily, it's top secret. We wouldn't want that kind of technology falling into the wrong hands. I'm friends with one of the officers at this base. If there's a top secret project being worked on, he would know about it. I asked the base commander to speak with him. He denied my request, but then I mentioned our hard past and how closely we had bonded during my six years of service. I threatened to tell him about the so-called top secret project. Calm down, soldier. I'm not a soldier anymore, but I remember how you higher ups used to treat us. One of the reasons I'm glad I'm not serving right now. He looked over to the door and motioned for the soldiers to come in. I knew what was going on. I sucker punched one of them before the other slammed the butt of his rifle into my head. I fell down and covered myself as best I could from the endless punches and stomps. They lifted me up by my arms and the base commander looked at me in the eye and said, you're lucky to be friends with that officer. Otherwise you'd be shot like a dog and left to die. He wasn't lying. I limped my way back to the jeep, the two soldiers following close behind. They dropped me at my house, but left me with a warning. If you speak of this to anyone, we'll come pick you up again. But this time, they said, you won't come back. I eyed them as they drove away, leaving a trail of dust and smoke. I staggered to the front door and was about to go inside when I heard my neighbor calling. Sheila is an old woman who wears colorful tunics and is always smiling. Ah, there you are. Where have you been all morning? She didn't see too well, otherwise she would have spotted my bruised face. Nowhere, just visiting friends. Ah, okay, said Sheila. Say, you didn't hear about the lights from yesterday, did you? No, wait, what did you say? The lights, she said wondrously. Everybody saw them, those beautiful glowing lights that just hovered in the sky. Why did she have to say it like that? They stood still, like watchful angels looking down on us. Then they began moving this way and that. Then they went, she motioned with her finger, zip and zap. It reminded me of my dear Charlie. Charlie was her grandson. Why did it remind you of Charlie? Because that's what he does when he loses his favorite toy. He runs all over the place, mad with rage. That's when he's at his angriest. And then she said, Oh, and wait until you hear this. They were right above your house the whole time. Oh Lord, they must have smelled your cooking and hoped to get a taste. She laughed at herself as I slammed the door shut behind me. I'm lying in bed right now with a 32 by my side. Every time I see a light at my window, I grab my pistol. My hand shakes as I struggle to point it at the car that drives by. Probably a nice family heading home for the night. A little while ago, I almost blew a hole through my TV as it turned on spontaneously. At the time, the lights in the house flickered. Then I noticed that the crickets have stopped chirping, and now it's dead quiet. If they come for me, I'll try not to miss, or not. I might just blow my brains out before they get me. Who knows? All I can do is wait. <laughs>